recording so that we, we can get started. Hello, everyone. Hi. I did want to say boo, but hello. <laughs> So, oh, I, oh boy, yep, I forgot all about that, that I have to say all that stuff, <laughs> and that's, and I was putting things in folders, and that is in a folder that I did not bring to the table, so give me a minute while I run and find that folder. Okay. Okay, so I've, I've got the right folder. Give me a minute to find the right. Okay. It's not working out. <clears throat> Can I help, Dorothy? I'm looking for the email, which has all the words in it that I'm supposed to read at the beginning. Dorothy, can I, help with can I give you the words? Yeah. Uh, sure. So it's 7.03, if you want to call the meeting to order. Yep. I will call the meeting to order. Um, and we're having yep. it remote with a special set of words, which so we have the presence of a quorum. We're meeting by a remote means pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. And next we're gonna announce that we're recording via Zoom and you can take the role for members to make sure that everyone can hear and be heard. Okay, let me just get rid of that. <clears throat> okay. Okay, Shalini. I'm present. And Anna, I'm going to do everybody's name. Anna Devlin Gautier. Present. Okay. And do Andrew Steinberg. Present. Present. Okay. Okay. Dorothy Pam, present. And Anika Lopes. Present. And I believe that's it. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, we're all here. Good. Thank you. Um, so we have an agenda, which, you know, next time I won't try to get organized because my organization just confused me. Okay. We have th certain major things we have to do the parking permit program revisions, and we have the staff here for that. We have the committee work plan and timeline, and we have the town manager appointments. Those are the major things that we have. And, um, unless I'm told otherwise, uh, we'll proceed in that order unless um, the town manager would like to do the appointments first. No, I, I think you should do everything. The other, I think the order you had was right. Okay. Um, all right. So we were going to start with the, um, I'm not quite sure where we pick up on the question of the um, parking permit recommendations. Um, so I think that I would like you to tell me where we're picking it up today. Want me to go ahead, Dorothy? Yes, okay. please. Um, on, please do. So there's a couple things. So um, you'll notice in your packet tonight, there was a new version of the parking permit regulations. Um, in preparing for the meeting, Athena actually identified that the version we had done track changes to that you'd seen previously had other changes from the parking permit regulations that are online. Um, there were some sort of formatting changes and some other sort of clarification type changes, but we felt it was better to go back to the permit regulations that are posted online and give you that version so you can see what we're proposing relative to what 
actually currently are the regulations. So the, the version in your packet called um, original parking permit system with markups, that's the version you want to uh, look at. And if you can um, have it on your screen, it's probably best. Um, and I can share my screen too if people want. Um, so that's the version I think we want to react to and, and use going forward. And my suggestion, I guess, on, on next steps would be we can either go through this again, um, and I can highlight the, the changes, or I, you know, I've started coming up with a short list of sort of the, the key topics um, that people have raised um, at this at TSO and what we've heard from others. Um, and we could, I could just let raise those and you could talk through them. Um, anyone have any particular thoughts on this? Um, do, how, do all of you have the newest edition in front of you? Um, because if not, I think we'd probably want Sean to share his screen. Uh, Anna, do you have a comment? I, I was just going to ask Sean, can you just repeat the title of the document? That's the most. So it's original. It. Yeah. Original parking permit system with markups. That's the you. one you want. Yeah. And so you'll see, it looks, um, I like the other version better, um, which is because <laughs> it had clarifications in it. This version you'll see looks a little more 2005 ish. Um, which was when it was last updated. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so we can decide how we want to just the formatting and the clarification piece. If, if there's wording changes, we can work on those too. But um, the primary changes we put in here, so you can see those. Um, so I'll share my screen and make this a little bigger. Um, so I think the major difference between the other version and this version that you're seeing is the just the order in which things come up. Um, so this one, the permit area is at the beginning. Um, so we just put in a table to how it was worried for, put it in a table format. And Jen, were there any new streets that have been added since the original, uh, this original permit regulation was put together? Not that I can see, but I will double check again okay. tomorrow to make sure. Okay. So that's one of the major changes is move putting that into a table format. Um, the other change throughout the, one of the other changes throughout the document is that where it says select board, we've put in town manager. So that, that pops up in a few places. Um, this section, access to parking spaces, so where it says no parking permit space shall be dedicated for or restricted to the use of any individual permit holder. Um, I added, other, unless otherwise noted, because again, we know there are some reserve spots that um, an area that's been set up in the garage. Um, so I wanted to make sure that wasn't overly confusing. Um, and then the annual parking permit fee. So there's a section here again that says annual fees for parking permits and passes established under the section shall be set and maybe adjusted. And we put in town manager where before it said select board or designee. Mm -hmm. And then in the fee section, we can, we took out the way it was worded before and put in what you saw in the previous version. So that same sort of um, structure. And it includes information on the visitor pass and the, the permit replacement fee. The permit year um, the dates have been pro the proposed changes here to change it to a full year, um, uh, changing it to a full year model mm -hmm. as opposed to a, a nine month. Um, in this section around the effective hours of parking permit spaces. So uh, again, we switch select board to town manager in terms of determining those effective hours. And that might be it. Yeah. So the primary changes, again, are the, the fee schedule, obviously, is the big one. Um, and then insertion of town manager, where it currently says select board. So for a conversation starter, um, I think the thing we've received a lot of feedback on is, are, is the, um, the level of the fees and whether the phasing is right. Uh, we're proposing three years of, we've heard feedback that that might be too long of a time span or maybe it should be, be done differently. Oh, 
I'm looking to see if anyone has their hand up, which is what I didn't do before. <clears throat> well, I, I, I have a, a general worry, concern. Oh, Anna, your hand's up, go ahead. Anika's hand is up before mine. Oh, I can't see that, okay. Um, Anna, get, go ahead. Getting a contrast background for the hand is something we all have to work on. Um, okay. Uh, so Sean, I have to apologize. I had a, a computer mishap and so I lost my marked up version of, mm -hmm. of this. So can you say, did you, have you changed these since the last time that we looked, did you change the, the one that I was particularly bugged about, which was the reserved spot permits? The amount? Yeah, the amount. No, so we haven't made it. We left that the same as what you discussed last time. Um, okay. I think, you know, talking to the town manager, I think what our hope is tonight or um, tonight, if we can, is what changes does, to, does the committee want to make to this so that right. there's a version ready for um, the hearing for people to react to. So um, if there are changes the committee wants to to make, I think now is the time to propose them and we can and we can track that on our on our document. Great. I'd like to see that higher. <laughs> OK, that's my helpful. That's my helpful feedback right now. Okay, that's you're talking about reserve spots in Boltwood. Yes, long term ones. Okay, right. Okay, yes. Um, Anika. Thanks. So, Sean, did you say that the concern was? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear what you said about the feedback regarding the the length of time. What yeah. So I, I I guess it's not broad feedback, but I've heard I think from a, um, mostly counselors that. Um, the, the fee doesn't increase fast enough, um, high enough and fast enough. So, so that, again, so I think that's an overarching theme to look at is whether um, maybe three years is too long or maybe not three years for all of these um, in terms of a transition plan and, and is the end result the right level. All right, so I gotta do this. And I'm sorry, just a follow up. Was it, uh, is it possible to revisit after some time? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, absolutely. So, the, to see how. yeah. So, I think what um, if the these go through the way they are now, the town manager would have the ability to consider these fees, like we do all the other fees, which is every year um, we sort of re we review fees and see if they're matching um, uh, the cost of providing that service. So, um, that's one benefit of having the the change from select board to town managers. It gives him the ability to review those on an annual basis. Thank you. Okay, um, I guess Andy, go ahead. I uh, can't hear you. I just realized that I had myself muted. Um, Sean might be able to help with this. Uh, we had a discussion at the Finance Committee meeting about some of this too. It was a, it was a first round discussion. We we're going to come back for a second round discussion. Also, uh, there were a number of issues that were raised uh, on the page that we're on. I think that there were, that was where a lot of discussion happened around uh, accelerating the uh, changes. There was a question that was raised and John of uh, you can help on, on the resident uh, permits. Uh, wanted to look a little bit more closely at um, vehicles that are not registered in Amherst and um, whether those fees um, sufficiently reflect the amount of tax that's being paid in other communities not being paid in Amherst for vehicles that are um, in Amherst more than half of the year. Uh, so those were two of the issues that we were talking about. There were some neighborhoods that we were uh, talking about. It did have some initial discussion about the location um, and the boundaries of the neighborhoods that are covered by the resident parking system. Um, we were very conscious of the question of how much money 
um, is needed within the transportation fund, what we're trying to generate in the way of new revenue and matching that against what we're doing and whether we're um, doing it quickly enough to achieve so that we had the revenue available to us because uh, if we're going to be running in a deficit for a period of time afterwards and we haven't raised fees, uh, there was some discussion about comparison to other communities nearby that have similar systems. Northampton in particular was discussed. Is there anything I missed, John? No, I, th recall? I think that, that sounds right. And um, Jen has taken a look at like the average excise tax bill to get a sense of how much it is and, and whether the difference that we're showing here is, you know, it's reflective of that difference. Um, I think the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jen, I think the average excise tax bill is somewhere around 100, maybe a little bit more than 100. Um, it, it's hard to go by the average because, you know, every vehicle is different. You know, some vehicles will be 100, some will be 600, depending on the vehicle. Um, so it, I think the average is hard there, but we are, we, we could look more into those numbers to see if there's a better way of estimating um, that sort of lost excise tax from vehicles registered outside of town. Okay. So I think what, we were, what we were thinking about just to, for the committee's uh, understanding of this is that uh, we wanna make sure that um, we are uh, also um, thinking about having a parking fee system that does more to encourage um, students who are here, you know, nine months out of the year to uh, register their cars in Amherst. And we can't encourage that if we don't have a sufficiently uh, thoughtful policy on parking. So those are the kinds of issues that we had in the first round of discussion. And we are going to follow up. Unfortunately, our next meeting is really right before the um, 10th when we have the yeah. forum. I think but we pushed it up a little earlier, Andy. Didn't we move that up? That's um, right. Yeah, that's right. We, we got did. a little more time now. So we will have a little bit. That's right, we did. I have to go back and look at my notes on that too. Because um, I'm doing all of this off memory right now. And, uh, there's a limit to the size of the uh, memory bank. Um, so I think that that's basically what's going, what's happening within the finance committee discussion, which in the end, uh, you know, we were, uh, finance committee reports to TSO, I'm the crossover point, and then TSO is ultimately the one that's going to be making a recommendation. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, Dorothy, I think that will be the end of my report. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Shalini, I don't, I don't know what, whether your hand came up after mine, but I, I will speak after you speak. How's that? Go uh, no, go ahead. You were uh, actually before me, so please okay. go ahead. All right. So my, I have a concern, um, and that is that this is going to be kind of cast in stone. I'm trying to get this to, to minimize. Oh, damn. Okay. Trying to get rid of this thing. Okay. Um, we're going to get revenue from raising these permits. And the revenue will be used in very good form. It'll be used to um, hire more people and to put some money in a capital fund for transportation, all of which is good. But um, my concern goes as to behind the question of what are we charging is that we have the public way, which are roads, streets, and we are um, giving permits for people to park in a system that is not what we were told it was going to be. Um, we were told that people who live downtown would not have cars and um, that the landlords, the builders did not have to provide parking or adequate parking for them. And it turns out that many of the permits are in fact for people living in um, new structures downtown, which do not provide parking for them. So, um, I, the planning department yesterday at the planning board said that it will be looking at the municipal parking overlay, which allows that to go on, that that will be probably something they look at in the fall. And I'm very glad to hear that because I think that we need to revisit that. But um, I probably would like to see some major changes in how we are 
you know, cars that are permitted by going to these fees, which, you know, we're all talking about them revenue. Yes, it's revenue and it's revenue we could use and revenue we need. I just want to make sure that if we do this, we're not saying we are therefore forever stuck into getting the revenue we need for our transportation system this way. So that, that is my worry and concern that we will be locked in to this system. Um, and so if I'd love to have some answers from, um, from Sean or um, yeah. Paul on this. So I, I don't think you're, um, you're not locked in. It could always be adjust amended in the future. I think one of our goals for this is to try to, um, one of the reasons why we put town manager in here um, is to try to make it nimble, um, to be able to make decisions and, and react to things uh, maybe more quickly than it could if it had to go through um, the process we're going through now. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's one, one goal that we have in mind is how do we make this nimble and able to react and adapt to things um, more quickly and, and build it into our normal processes a little bit more. Okay. All right, um, thank you. Um, Shalini. Yeah, I also feel that um, the rate is too low given um, what UMass is charging, what um, the apartments themselves are charging. Mm -hmm. So my question was who, I guess the, my understanding is that these are mostly used by people who are living there, am I right? in those areas who uses these permits other than employees jen do you have the breakdown of um resident versus employee permits or do you have the estimate for roughly how many resident permits there are um i don't have it on hand right now but i know that the resident permits are far more than the employee permits and so if for the resident permit they have to be it, it is a, only for residents of downtown um, right. I can get that number while you're looking. I think it's somewhere around 500, but I can pull it up. Right. And so if mostly the people who are using this and we, so we shouldn't increase the employees, that's for sure. But if it's mostly for people who are living there and they don't have many choices in the, and we, the choice we are providing to them is so much lower than the apartment buildings they're living in or even going to umass mm -hmm. so i think we're completely justified in increasing our um, fees for that so i really highly recommend that we do that and what might be the concerns that is there something that we're not thinking through that staff or Paul that you are concerned about um, in the hesitation to increase it? Yeah, I mean, on my end, I think there's a, one of the reasons why we wanted the phase and so we could track the impact. So you know, each year we could track if it, there was any impact on the number of permits issued. Um, I think one concern would be the higher we raise the price for this parking, potentially the less likely people are gonna use this parking and may try to find other ways of circumventing the system potentially, um, or maybe they are more open to using the meter or the parking lots if this becomes, um, the, you know, the cost benefit of this becomes less um, for them. So, I mean, that's one concern. I think what I keep coming back to is I th we're open if, if, the, if the feedback is to increase mm -hmm. the fees, I think we need to, I think the hard part is what are we basing it on? Um, again, we base these levels on how do we get enough revenue to dedicate a certain percentage towards capital? If we're gonna go beyond that, you know, how do we find that, I guess that sweet spot? Um, and, and one alternative could be, you know, again, if, if the changes go through with the, where the town manager has the ability to modify this each year, um, you know, maybe we only have to decide on the first step. Um, and then the town manager could evaluate based on the demand if it changes it if it if the demand does not drop off the way um, potentially it could um, the fee could be adjusted again the following year can i jump in dorothy yes please. so so i think the goal for tonight is to decide what you want to advertise it's not you're not making a final decision it's what you want to put out there is the first mm -hmm. call for action once you decide what you want to advertise, we're going to notify all the permit holders and everybody to say, here's what the council is considering. And then you'll, we'll get some feedback from it. And so I think you want to put out there what you think um, you're going to feedback and probably going, uh, you know, either using this or going to where you want to go in terms of higher would probably be the wise thing to do because you can always, it's easier to lower the fee structure. 
um, I think Sean's con concern is that um, you can only charge fees to, to support the activity. You can't make money. We're not allowed to make money as a town basically uh, off of parking. We have to charge the mm -hmm. fees that, that promote, promote, provide the service. And I think, Shalini, if you're looking at the resident permit vehicles registered outside of Amherst or the reserve spot permit, because they're two different things. Like the, um, just want to be clear what you're referencing in terms of increasing things. Um, I would say both, but uh, okay. I was just looking at the, I mean, the residence permit, okay. not the reserve spot. But even the reserve spot, for sure. So, so the reserve spot is lim is similar to what the apartment complexes have right. on their property, and that's what's in the lower level of the Boltwood garage. The resident permit is what's on the you get permission to park on the street, um, in the, in certain neighborhoods, and some people will just move to a place where you don't need a resident permit to park. What might be the options for people like uh, Sean was saying that they could circumvent, and so what what are the options that people have done done like what are we afraid will happen yeah i guess i mean for me I, if there's if there's side streets that maybe aren't um aren't marked potentially parking on side streets um you feeding the meters instead of um using these spots um yeah, I mean, again, I, I, I think we don't know. Whatever we do here, it seems like it's going to be a pretty drastic increase to the existing fee level. So trying to predict, um, we haven't done it before. So trying to predict what the outcome will be is going to be difficult. And one last question. If we do the public forum with, with this fee structure and then we get feedback and people like not many people show up or there doesn't seem to be a reaction and then we want to increase it, will we have to do another public mm -mm. forum? No. Okay. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. Last thing, can we uh, can we invite uh, Tracy had sent from TAC. They had sent us a comment, and uh, I I'm sorry I didn't get to read it and understand it fully. But I don't know if you want to invite um, Tracy in at some point, and also if the staff wants to speak to the recommendations from them. That's all. Well, I think that her recommendation is, is more to do with a different type of permit for residents, meaning people who live on the street. And I find it confusing to talk about that while we're talking about this. So um, if anyone wants to argue with me, please do. But um, Anna, have you read Tracy's comments from TAC? I have read Tracy's comments from TAC. Um, yeah, I mean, I think those are, they had some really good suggestions and I know Tracy's here, I think, yeah. And uh, they had some really good suggestions about kind of which streets correspond with the different areas. And so I would love to hear the staff's feedback on those. I don't know if you all have had a chance to read them, but I'd love to hear your feedback on those as well. That was not my initial question, Dorothy. Is it okay if I ask my- Right, but, I, but her comments were not on what we're talking about now. They were not on parking permits that are given to people who pay a yearly fee. They were about people who live on a street who need to get a permit to be able to allowed to have a guest park there, I believe, or to park on the street. Uh, Jen, totally clarify for uh, um, me if I'm wrong, but they're, they're still buying those permits, but it's for a specific zone. So right. they can only, they're only eligible to buy that permit if they live on that street, but it is it would be subject yeah. to the same fee structure. Still um, a resident permit. Yes, still a resident permit. So, so, it, so Dorothy, yeah. it is related. It's just not about the specific fee okay. structure. It's about which streets count for which areas. So it, it is related. It's in okay. this It's in this report somewhere, I think. It is, it is somewhere in there. Okay, so say what you want to say. Okay, so, well, I'd love to go there next after we finish the fee structure conversation. I think that could be a really good second spot. Um, Sean, you know, I mean, I hear you saying we aren't, we aren't allowed to like make revenue off of this, but I think one thing that would be really helpful is to look at the projected, I'm gonna use the term revenue just cause I don't know enough about this world to know what I should be using, but um, the projected revenue as compared to what your needs, what the needs are mm -hmm. for parking, um, that would be a really helpful table to see as we consider the, the stages of the increases as well as the general rate, um, kind of a comparison would be really helpful to kind of okay. see like at what point are we getting what we need um, in terms of 
is this, cause I'm assuming we're allowed to use these fees to pay for things like meters or the program, like the software that, and things yeah. like that. So that would be a helpful comparison. Um, maybe if it's possible, like a five-year projection, um, just cause we just came from JCPC and you had some beautiful tables there. So I'd love to see those for this. You're saying um, like table game is not, it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> no, table game, table game is pretty strong elsewhere, but I'd, I'd love to see the comparison okay. here. Um, the other question was, you know, I think when we think about the, the downsides of this and the challenges, and I think Anika, I believe you brought this up, the concept of a hardship provision, um, you know, I think that's something to consider. And I recognize that that's a fraught conversation when you're talking about um, specifically students because income level doesn't always match bank account level, I guess, for lack of a better phrase. But I do think if there's, an, if there's some sort of way for folks to petition for um, if that's relevant, I, I think some, some option for that, Paul, I, 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 it's a vague concept, but I think that for me is the only downside of like, if we are upping this in a way that isn't sustainable for someone who's living downtown, it would be a question for me of what is the, what is the avenue for support in that sense? Um, yeah, because I mean, I'm looking at this and the, the fiscal year 25 resident permit for folks registered outside of Amherst comes down to 33 bucks a month. And I think you said the resident permits for the apartment buildings, which I know are closer to where they're living. I mean, that worked out to a hundred, roughly 125 bucks a month. So, I mean, we're still talking big monthly difference here. So I, I'd love to, that's one of my reasons for increasing the, the fees there, uh, even though I recognize that it is a different parking situation. Um, I see Paul has his hand up. Thank you. Yeah, so we cannot do a hardship provision for a $150 permit, the work that would go into having them provide income tax information. We're not gonna, we can't go into that role. Um, and if someone, and, and this goes to speak to who is being charged the fee. And, um, you know, I think what I worry about is we have residents come into town every year who are renting apartments or in, in our neighborhoods and in order to park, on, and there's not enough parking, they would like to park on the street legally. And then we're, we're telling them you're gonna pay through the nose to, to get a parking permit. And this is to try to legalize what people are doing. And we don't want, there's always the adverse impact of whatever fee you, you charge. So you want, we wanna look at the administrative cost of administering the fee when you, when you decide on what a fee should look like, um, the revenue, potential and whether it's worth collecting, um, but also what's the um, behavior modification that will happen when you start to charge fees. And so uh, I think several people ask, well, what, what are the adverse consequences? And so we see it in the town hall parking lot. People, if it, people want to park there overnight who live in the neighborhood, they'll come in, they'll park at um, eight o'clock or whenever parking enforcement stops. And then they don't get out of the lot until they know parking enforcement doesn't start till nine. So they're parked in the mm -hmm. lot until nine or 10. They take, they say, maybe I've got an extra hour people coming to work. There's no place to park, you know? And, and so mm -hmm. they would go to say CVS lot, they go to other parking lots. So, so you will change behavior to, if you really go up because people are, you know, you're, we, you know, if you've been a college student, you're saying, I don't have money to pay $400 for a permit. Are you crazy? You know, um, I'm going to put my car at the high school parking lot and just leave it there and hope they don't do anything to it. You know, so I think there's going to, we, we, that's why it, taking it, taking steps along the way with the ability to go up is, you know, as a dial instead of a switch, I think mm -hmm. is the way to approach it. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Anna. Anna, like the Anna, sorry. Um, it's okay. So <laughs> yeah, Paul, I hear what you're saying. And I think that we still, I guess, Sean, maybe that's reinforcing my, my, desire to see that sort of chart of like, what's the need versus what, how do we get there? Um, that, that reinforces that for me because, you know, I think we want to, we need to meet the needs and, and I recognize that we'll change behavior. And so what we're trying to figure out, Paul, if I'm not wrong, is what's the tipping point where we can raise this without deeply impacting behavior that does harm. Right. So, uh, yeah, I think that Sean would be really helpful as well sure. as the impact of the excise fees. Um, mm -hmm. and kind of what, what the gap is that we are getting there. Yep. So um, are we saying then that we're not gonna take any decision on this until we see charts of this nature or are we, um, well, we can't. Willing to make any, do something else? 
Um, well, and uh, Andy had his hand up and then back to Anna. Yeah, I was just going to ask Sean, um, at the Finance Committee meeting, I asked you to pull out, I think, the July memo and uh, that one table that showed what the um, enterprise fund pays for and what we what our goal was. And I thought that was helpful for the discussion there and might be helpful here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this isn't, um, it's not a, a year to year plan um, like Anna was asking for, but I can just do a quick background. So we, yeah. Is it larger? Is this larger? Was that oh, good? good? Okay. Um, so what this is, one of the hard parts about doing the five year plan, Anna, is the transportation fund was is all over the place with the pandemic. Um, but what we tried to do with this was look at pre pandemic, what the revenues were as an average, what the expenses were as an average. We then rolled the expenses forward, taking into account salary increases and things going up, um, pension costs going up and things like that. And then to kind of back into a revenue number that we would need um, to be able to dedicate uh, in this scenario, $200,000 per year to capital, um, either through debt service or through capital. So, so that's how we sort of came up with the, the ballpark of the, the amount of revenue we were trying to raise. And then, um, this chart here is the one that sort of tracks roughly the numbers in each uh, uh, permit type and what the increase in revenue would be on a yearly basis. So um, this total 115,000, but it's actually a little bit higher because I think we had 20 reserve spots and it's actually 28 reserve spots. So that'll actually go up a little bit more. Um, so that was sort of again, our rationale for how we came to, to that number. Um, Anna. So I think we are, so to confirm, we're not taking action tonight because we haven't had the public hearing other than to suggest to Sean what we'd like to see for next time we come together. Is that correct? I see Sean nodding. Okay. Yeah, that's correct, yes. Yeah, yes. Actually, what you're deciding is what you're going to advertise in the newspaper. So thank what you. words I, are you going to put in there? So I, I looked at the public hearing notice and I'm. it, it doesn't say... It, it there's well numbers are not there for money and so you mean in the links so it says the above reference general bylaws are available here do you mean that in that here the document there will be numbers there because i looked at the sentences and it i didn't see anything that tied us to raising it any percentage and it didn't have that kind of numbers in it yeah athena has her hand up i can't see or find so dorothy if i may I, yeah, I just can't see you. Uh, okay, so in the past, the way we've done these hearing notices is to link. So the um, I can bring it up if that's helpful, but if you've all seen it, then um, I won't bother. But the, the hearing notice in the newspaper is fairly brief. It just says that the TSO committee is holding a public hearing on behalf of the town council on permit parking regulations at the date and time via the Zoom link and there's instructions okay. for joining. And then the longer one that we put on the bulletin board mm -hmm. um, has more information. And that one does contain a link to the specific changes that we're making to the permit parking regulations. So that's what we need to know. We need the document to link to that meeting notice. And then, you know, if there's any feedback about the, the notices in general, then we can talk about that as well. Right. So there's general bylaws is one link and town council policy regarding the control and regulation. So of that is this document that we're talking about right now that would have no, a correct. No, we're talking about the, the proposed changes to the permit parking regulations. Well, that I, document. you know, I'm, I'm looking at I've got the document and I'm I, OK, hang on, let me bring it up. So, yeah. I printed it out so I could see it and OK. Uh, because the one on control of public ways does not is uh, actually is just a, the general policy on public ways it does not have these um, things in it. Sorry, I'm a little slow with all these windows open. Um, so this is the this is the draft notice for the bulletin board. So 
here, right here it says the town council will review and act on permit parking regulation changes proposed by the town as shown in the document here. Additions shown in red, deletions shown in red strike through. So it's the document that connects here that we need to finalize so that we can post these notices. Okay, I do see that. I To me, that's not clear, but um, um, I mean. Do you have a suggestion that we can no, uh, no, no. clarify if, if it that, better? If that, if that works, then that's fine. Um, I'm just wondering who is gonna read this and who would know. Um, so, but. I guess when I see additions and deletions, I think of a document that's in process. I don't think of, of well, I guess it is in process. Okay, so that's, that's right. yeah. You know, so if, if people have understood that in the past, then I'm sure that those who would care would understand it in the future. Um, I just wouldn't be one of them, that's all. Um, I've just opened this up in words. So if we have suggestions that this is not posted yet, so we can make changes if we'd like to. Shalini has a hand up. Ah, Shalini, please. Yeah, I actually had the same uh, reaction as Dorothy, that it felt like a lot of mumbo jumbo and I'm in government and I was like, what the hell? And so if just a resident is reading, they'll be like, what? And they'll just skim through. I wonder if there's a way to write it, like who is this for or um, what impact is it gonna have, you know, like in terms of that or, and then how to participate and then maybe have that in accordance with and all of that could be at the bottom. So the legal stuff, which needs to be there, but can that be put at the bottom? And the, the important things can be like up you know, hey, we're changing this thing and here's, and do we, can we also explain why we're doing that? This hasn't changed in so long that we're gonna do that. And here's what we're proposing. Please come, we wanna hear from you. So me using language that's really like talking to the people and not so legally, unless we need to be so legally in our language. We probably do need to be so, so do legal. We though? But Andy, do you have some thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, speaking for the lawyer side of me, I think you do have to um, start where we're starting because it, it does have to do with Section 3.14 in town, town Council regulations. What you can do, though, um, might be better just uh, to emphasize it is to bold some language and to make sure that town council review and act on the permit part that not that section but i would bold the next paragraph for the most part and i would include in that um, town council review and act on permit parking regulations proposed by the town which include um, increases in fees uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's good. For uh, on street parking permits. For on street parking permits, maybe that is the best way to do it. Well, it's, um, it includes um, garage too. So I think permit fees is probably best. Just leave it permit fees because of the garage element. Okay. Or you could say on street and garage parking permits. Or that, yeah. That sentence would make see people say, oh, I have an idea of what this is about. So if you, by bolding it, I think that it, it grabs the attention that that's the key paragraph, even though we've um, had to include the language from the prior paragraph. Right. And then the rest of it has to do with how you participate. And mm -hmm. I think the people who get past the bold and are interested in participating will know what the rest of it means. Right. Yeah, um, I think those are good suggestions. Um, any other um, comments on this, um, uh, Shalini? Yeah, I, I wonder if we can put like bullet, like subtitles or something like proposed changes, um, how to participate uh, or something that kind of just, because I mean, I think people who read blogs and stuff very quickly these days look at the subtitles and kind of skim mm -hmm. through. 
Good. And so it will just organize and how to participate and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And that could be proposed yeah. changes or something. I think I think those are good because I think you're correct that people are reading very fast and not very well a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and this should call the because if somebody does in fact park on the street or have a permit, they would like to know about this um, or have a friend see it and say, hey, you should you should tune in on that because um, we it is it is important to alert people who mm -hmm. would be involved that this is going to be on the on the agenda. Um, Okay, Paul. So it's important that, you know, that this be sort of a neutral, almost a neutral thing, but I think it's important to do what, what you just did, which is, you know, we're increasing fees, like put the big three things that are impacted, increasing fees for the garage and fee, increasing fees. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a whole lot else. We're adding, you might say, what adding Cosby and Page if you're going to do that. Um, but also be able to learn that we will send something that's, uh, you know, that, um, will also be sent uh, electronically to all of our permit holders. So they will right, all get right. an individual permit, an invitation, mm -hmm. um, a notification of it so that the people who are most directly impacted will hear about it as well. Okay, that's good. I know you said that before, but I'm glad that you're saying it again. That's really important. Uh, Anna. Um, I have an accessibility question. In those documents, if we're only using color as the only differentiating component for the text that's added, uh, is that, and this is a little bit of an unfamiliar area for me, but is that considered fully accessible for folks? Is it possible to also make the additions bold or something like that? Athena, I think Athena has a good answer yeah. for me. Well, we, we actually have a, a, a person who can answer that. Paul, I believe you're officially colorblind. <laughs> Can, can you see this? Because this is a really good question. Boy, there are real standards. I mean, my, Paul, you're great, but yeah, there are, there are yeah, actual my, standards my, for this. And that's my, I just, that's more my question. There's a HIPAA violation right there. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I, I defer to Athena on this. Okay. So when these are posted, um, there we do have accessibility on the town website. I haven't tried using the reader to see if it reads the text in a different color font, if it lets you know that there's text in a different color font. Um, but this is the standard that we use when we're making changes to bylaws and so forth. So I think that's worth investigating to see if we can um, do that in a more accessible way if the readers don't. Um, but that, that might be something that, that needs greater research than we can solve right now because that's how we do regular and zoning bylaw changes mm -hmm. at the moment. Thank you. Yeah, my only quick research just came up with that color shouldn't be the only differentiation. Um, and so I just, mm -hmm. yeah, it'd be awesome to look into that at some point. Happy to help if I can. Thanks. Great. Thank you. And um, I, I think Athena's statement that there's, there's a reader on the website and they'll check what the, how the reader does it is a very um, good thing to do because this, this applies to a lot of documents, a lot of things. Um, Okay, so any other comments on this? Um, do you want to, um, Anna, do you want us to say, in addition to color, we choose different fonts? No, I think, I, I, don't, I don't know if font, I, I, I'm comfortable continuing to research it, um, but I do, I would like to see it addressed at some point going forward. I know that we're kind of under a time, time crunch here, so mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay, Paul. Just to add, I mean, the council should standardize its practice on this. Right now, this is our standard practice. If the council wants to change its practice to be, in, and, and if we're not in compliance with ADA, we can find that out. But I don't think every committee should be using a different method for showing changes to documents. Very totally good. agree. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, good. Okay, so what is our next step here? Are we going to say, uh, I guess the committee accepts this as the, um, format for the ad. Is that correct? Is this a voting matter or a consensus matter? I think if there are no, no other changes, we can agree okay. by consensus that I'll go ahead and post that. Okay. Thank you very much, Athena. You're welcome. Okay. And Shalini, your hand is still up. Yes. Do we need to train, uh, look at the print version? This is mm -hmm. the web version. Could we just quickly look at the print version if that also needs to say something about the proposed changes and rates? I think I remember seeing that it didn't say there were going to be changes in rates. 
We've well, talked uh, well, the, the short one. Yes. Okay. The, 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 there's two versions. There's one is the public hearing notice, and I guess the other one is the newspaper. This short one, yes. So you would say that the same changes that were made in the longer one should be here. Is that correct? Um, I think that what we need to understand is that uh, newspaper advertising is by the length and is very expensive. And you then also have to recognize that it's also buried fairly far in the newspaper. Very few people probably see it. And it is there because the legislature tells us it has to be there, not because we think that it's a grand form of reaching a large number of people. So um, I just caution trying to make it longer just for those reasons. I, I certainly understand that. However, I believe that the number of words ad added would be under 12. Um, so. so just to be clear, ads like this can be several hundred dollars. And we're ad words, it's like $10 a word. I don't know exactly what, it's very expensive. So we try to keep the words to a minimum. And it, it's just, it serves a legal function. It doesn't serve a, a true notification function, but you know, so there are certain things that are required in a legal ad and we have to put those in. And when you have to put text in, it can be hundreds. Uh, I just paid a bill for my council for $700 for one legal ad. Okay. Okay, Shalini, you have your hand up. Yeah, I can't think on the thing, but I feel like we can improve this without increasing the number of words. So, but I can't think on my feet about this, but um, like, I think the main thing is the changes in the rates, which is the big change that everyone should know about. So just even that changes to Amherst permit parking rates. Is that inaccurate? Athena's a hand up. Okay, well, how come I can't see this? I don't see Athena at all. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe I tried to. to I'm, I'm here, but my comment isn't, isn't about this. So go ahead. Okay. Anna so has her hand up too. Here when you put your hand up, Athena, but please speak. Athena, do you want me to, to go? Because it's please, about. Yeah, you. please go ahead. So, so Shawnee, I think there are more because there when we get to like the TSO recommendations about which streets go where that is also impacted by this. So it's more than just the fees, but even though the fees are probably the part that people would, I, mean, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to guess about that. Oh, there she is. Okay. Okay. I, I clicked not seen on video participants and I see Athena's box now. Okay. So Athena, do you still have, you have something to say? Your hand is up. Yeah, I have I have a comment. I think if if what you're looking to do is to raise more awareness about this public hearing, then I think there might be better ways of achieving that. Um, Bri Brianna's really good at, at adding things to the in the news items on the town webpage, our communications manager. So, I think if we were going to add an in the news item to the the town homepage, we can ask to do that, and that will probably reach more people than changing the words in this public hearing notice, as Paul said. Not a lot of people go digging through public hearing notices in the newspaper, and um, I, you know, I don't object to adding uh, the word fees or anything like that here. But I think if if your intent is to reach more people and to mm -hmm. um, let people know what's going on here, that might be a better way to do so. Okay, um, Shalini, is that okay with you? Um, I mean, I I do understand the desire to, if you're doing it, to do it, but. Um, I think that what Athena's suggestion would in fact reach more people. Uh, and then you could not be counting each word and whatever. Is that okay? I seem to have lost Shalini now. Yes. Okay. I think we can anyway. move on. Okay. That's a Thank good you. suggestion. Thanks, Athena. Good. Very good. Okay. So we will move on. Uh, these are we, the ads have been put together and they have been approved by the committee to be posted. Um, Okay. Um, what do we need to do at this point on this topic? Yes, Shalini. Oh, uh, can we take, oh yeah, Paul, do you want to go first? 
so the document that Sean was sharing initially, that is the change. And that's the document that, that you're actually going to be acting on. So I mean, not, I mean, we're, he's got some adjustments to it, but in terms of getting the substance of that done, basically, what do you want that first set of fees to look like? I didn't hear any other things. And then, so I think you have to decide on the fees that you want to put on. And then the second thing is you want to look at um, whether you want to expand resident only permit area two per the recommendation of TAC. Um, and I think that's, that's that was the one that would have to be advertised. Okay, so the discussion of fees, we've heard several points of view. Um, one is to raise them quicker. Uh, the other argument has been by doing it gradually, um, somehow one is allowed to, I guess, do research, um, get an idea of, of what impacts what, what causes, do, do, are there changes of parking patterns that result from a certain raise? Um, and again, we won't know till afterwards. So um, there were a number of people who spoke in favor of higher fees sooner. Um, does somebody want to lead that argument? Um, okay, Sean, I see your hand. So um, I think one area that I've heard feedback on and, and then the information we got from, um, I forgot what the name of the apartment complex, the, the big new one in the center of town. Um, the information we got on what they charge came in sort of after we had put this together. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it may make sense at this point, I can pull it up if you want at the word version of the changes um, to increase the reserve spot permits. Um, maybe increase it so the top end is 1500 for now. Um, and then I can increase each incremental step and we can see if there's support for that. Okay, um, Anna. Sure, so I mean, I was one of the people that was pushing for higher fees. I think that Sean, if you can show us the kind of that, I'm calling it a table, maybe it's not a table, I don't know, but uh, show us that the relationship between what we need to pay for and how we can get there, um, then I will happily reconsider to fit within that because like Paul said, we aren't making money off of this, but I wanna make sure that we're meeting the needs that we have in terms of parking. So sure, I'm sure. comfortable working within those parameters. I just don't, I'm unclear on what those are. Mm -hmm. And if I, if that's somewhere that I missed, I apologize and happily will be directed to it. Um, but especially with, with any changes that we're thinking about for the Boltwood spots. Okay, and Andy? Yeah, I was a question for Sean and that is, do you have any information based upon uh, industry practice, uh, industry being cities and towns, mm -hmm. or otherwise that um, this incremental approach is recommended uh, as a way of uh, testing increases before you go to the next step? Um, I guess not that I know of, but I don't know of any other place that's increased it um, so sharply, I guess. This is, again, we haven't touched them in a long time, so I don't think there's a lot of, um, I don't know of any, yeah, anything like that. So I think in general, when we when we know that a fee is out of alignment um, and it's got a, quite a ways to go to get to where it reflects the, the service being provided, we try to to do it over a, a path that's not at least painful path to mm -hmm. the, the resident. So is part of the uh, graduated fees um, a desire not to make this the um, insult of the day where people are gonna start writing uh, crazy letters and um, getting very, very upset? Um, I mean, nobody's gonna like a fee increase, but if the fee increase seems to be unreasonable and irrational, um, people do express themselves. Um, I see Jennifer's hand up. I just wanna throw it out there to be a little bit mindful to the admin portion of it, um, because we are gonna hear it frontline from the people, depending on how sharp of an increase it is. Um, and I like the form of doing it on a more gradual basis and reviewing it annually, um, because that way it's easier on our staff in the office. So I just wanted yeah. to throw that out there. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and Paul, and I'll get to you, Anna, after Paul. Okay. Yeah, just to, to amplify what Jennifer said, parking, they deal with a lot of people who get parking tickets. They come into the front door, they're screaming at the people in the window. Um, it's it's mm -hmm. 
and and Jennifer holds all the parking hearings when someone wants to dispute a parking ticket she has to sit down with them one on one and they get dispute their their upsetness to her so I think as you go more aggressively that's going to generate a lot more aggressive behavior because it's people will be really upset about it. they won't understand there's it's really hard for the staff then to explain why because mm -hmm. we don't like you parking on our streets or whatever it is you know it's, it's going to be I, I think this courtesy of that would be appreciated okay and Anna that makes sense and I think you know if if that if the increases that you're seeing or that you're showing now are the least likely in your mind to get vitriolic responses. Um, I understand that. And I think looking forward at, okay, what are years four and five then, if that's the case, if they, if that's, if up to year three, isn't getting us where we need to be, then what are year four and five doing to get us closer? Right. So I think with, again, without <laughs> bringing more, uh, uh, anger. Um, mm -hmm. My other question was just a clarifier on, and I swear I'm, I'm trying to go back and find my notes from that MMA conference, but this is an enterprise fund. And so is, are the funds from this, I mean, the two areas that I'm thinking of are resurfacing parking lots or uh, feasibility studies for things. Do those fall within enterprise because they are directly pertaining to parking or no? I, I'm thinking about possible uses yeah. for this in the future. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it could. Um, so parking lot repaving um, is mm -hmm. part of this fund. The, the parking lots that we have that generate the revenue. Yeah. Okay, that's a really um, a good thing for us all to remember when people come to us about on this issue um, that there's a lot of expenses and uh, Anna. Oh, there you moved. Okay. Um, you mentioned earlier, uh, if we're talking about new software for some of the parking kiosks, um, that would that be something. That's just a hypothetical. But, but I, th I believe that is something we're going to be doing. Is that not true, Sean? It's something we're considering. Um, we have to make a decision on what to do with the meters. Um, mm -hmm. We have the aging meters. So it's either replacing them with, with other meters or, or kiosks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have expenses coming up. Um, Andy, I think you were first, and then I see, oh, um, Anika, I don't see your hand that easily. Has it been up for a while? No, I think Andy was before. Okay. All right. So yeah, Andy. I just uh, was going to add that uh, also the PBTA, um, some of the PBTA costs come out of the transportation enterprise funds, and there are some other costs related to trying to generate um, business um, within downtown, which then generates more parking revenue, which is the reason that we uh, pay our uh, bid dues out of uh, the Transportation oh, okay. Enterprise Fund too. Right. So there are other expenses. And then of course, mm -hmm. another major one I think that has been talked about is uh, electronic systems and, uh, you know, the uh, there's a lot of exploration that needs to be done there about um, whether we can uh, develop signage that um, says where spaces are available, um, whether we can have linkage to the park mobile system uh, or whatever system we'll use for that, the park mobile purposes and other software that we're using. There are a whole lot of technology things that may be on the plate to improve the parking system too. Right, right. Okay, that, those are all good points. Um, Anika. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, most of what I was going to say has been covered, but just, you know, up first, since I am still becoming a driver, I do not have as much of a dog in the race as others, but um, I do think that because, you know, we, they're, there is a steep increase considering, and also that I think we know in comparison to anywhere, these uh, part, these rates um, are low and, and would continue to be low. Right. Uh, and also seeing as there will not, and understandably, I understand the reason why we would not have mechanisms in place for hardship. I think it makes sense to go with this and you know take it you know after the year or whatever time and, and see what's going on. Okay, so your your first the gradual increase to allow us to see and to study what's going on. Okay, uh, Shalini. Uh, given what Jennifer said, I agree with Anika that um, 
Although what I was going to say is that we wait till the hearing and see what sort of feedback we're getting from people and then go from there. And the second thing is that given that people will be upset, be upset, does it again make sense to then provide the reasoning for the increase or just even a mention in that um, in the announcements that we're making, not in the published one, no additional words, but at least in the online one, can we maybe just add a sentence or something that says that, you know, parking rates have not, fees have not been changed for the past so many years, blah, 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 years. And this is what we're considering. So even just that one line will soften, I think. Okay, I, I have a very technical question. So we put down, um, we attach to our notice, whatever we've decided the fees are gonna be, okay? And right now we're moving towards accepting what Sean has proposed, but I believe he said he was going to raise the long was it the, the dedicated spots on the, on the first floor of Boltwood? Okay, so now we have a hearing, public hearing. And after the public hearing, we say, you know what, we're not gonna do the three year, we're gonna let's do it all at once. Are we allowed to do that? Because we didn't advertise it. We said we were gonna do a three year thing. So I, I'm, the question I'm having is, how much do we have to tell them that we're gonna do ahead of time in order to be able to do it? And I see Paul was nodding his head. So explain that to me how we can do it. Yes, you'll, as long as it's sort of within the scope of what you were talking about. Um, so you're talking about permit fees, you're talking about increasing them. Uh, and these, this is a range that's been recommended. You can go above that, um, mm -hmm. so. Okay, so we could in fact do um, what Shalini has suggested. Um, we could at this moment say, we're gonna submit this thing with the, the three tiered three years. So uh, Anna is wondering about years four and five and, 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 and a, a more detailed chart of some of the expenses that would come out of the fund. But after the hearing, we could then deliberate and make a number of changes. Okay, all right. Um, so do we have to do anything more on this? I know we're gonna about to invite Tracy in to talk about the um, other part of this, uh, the, that had that involved street only parking. Um, so um, I will do that when you tell me it's time to do that. Um, Anna, you've got your hand up. Uh, Tracy's no longer in the attendees. Ah, okay. Um, all right, so are we going to discuss that other part now then? Sean has a hand up. Mm, okay, Sean, good, I couldn't see that. So do you, I just want to clarify, I just increased the reserve spot permit, but I wanted to make sure everyone sees it and is comfortable with it um, real quick. Is that okay if I share the screen really quickly? Yes. And if, um, so I just, I increased the um, FY25 to 1500, it was 1250 and then 1400 for FY24 and 1200 for FY23. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I think this was the area where we sort of flagged it was the most uh, low, lower than uh, comparables. So you have 200 and then you have 100. Yeah, so it's sort of two big chunks and then a small chunk. So mm -hmm. okay. just similar to the other um, increases. Yep. Um, Anna, see your hand. Sorry, I was raising it preemptively to talk about something else, so come okay. back to all right, so does this look fine to everybody? Sean, your hand is up. I don't know if it means you still want to talk. Because if you want to talk, just talk. No, I can't put it down until I stop sharing. So, um, okay, so. okay, good. All right, the little dance is sometimes hard to do. Okay, so um, that seems to be okay. We seem to have um, flexibility in what we can do in the future, um, which is good. Um, Anna, are you now ready for the next point? I'm now ready. Uh, I was wondering if Jennifer and Sean had had a chance to look at the TAC recommendations and if they had thoughts on them. I personally don't have any cons issues with them, but I wanted to hear uh, if you'd read them. Otherwise, I can recap them for you. Yeah, so we, I looked at them, Joan. I don't know if you had time to look at them. I mean, it was essentially adding streets, right, to um, the adding resident 
permit only areas. Yeah, adding streets in resident area two and then updating the list in section seven to include, yeah. um, and then the taking out the word parallel. Yeah, I didn't have any, I mean, I don't know if Paul or Jen did, I didn't have any strong reactions against those recommendations. I think it'll be interesting to see, um, particularly number one, where you add streets, if mm -hmm. anyone has comments at the forum um, or the hearing, but I didn't have any major issues with these recommendations. Um, could, I, could I ask a question there? Um, I, I guess I've discussed this a number of times and I'm still confused by it. Um, we're talking about streets where there is no parking of any kind on both sides. There are no parking permits of any kind, right? You cannot park, which means that a resident, if they had to have a guest or something, could not have them park on the street. Or is this a street where there's no parking except for people who've already bought permits who live somewhere else, not on the street, but have been paying their 25 a year. And the people who are on the street want to be able to buy a park per permit too, and they hadn't been allowed to. So this is, I just haven't really got the sense of what's been going on. Uh, Paul, you, you took your head, your hand up, and you took it down. I mean, Jen, do you get questions about these two streets? I think it's the question. I haven't had one question about these two streets in all the time that I've been reading parking appeals and talking to people about it. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not a concern, just mm -hmm. people. And, and I, is, it, I, is it no parking on these streets currently? Do you know? There is, it's not permitted. So you can't, you can't park there with a permit anyway. They said um, okay. on, that's question one I wanted to know. So there are no private permits on these streets. Well, one of them, Page Street, which I believe she wanted to add, is a very narrow street. Um, so there's no parking because it wasn't seen as possible for parking, I guess. I, I just, I, I haven't really gotten the issue on this one. Okay, Paul, your hand is up. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we'd want to talk to the town engineer about the recommendations on changing, putting parking on a on a new street or, the, in the, I just think you'd want their advice before you put that out as a change. And yeah. um, Anna. Yeah, sorry. This isn't saying that it's adding parking on Page Street or Beacon, Be Beston Street, excuse me. It's just saying that they could buy a, a permit for area for to park in the other designated areas in area two. But why can't it's they do that now? They're not in the eligibility area. So it's so, just expanding the eligibility area, not the parking lot. All right. Parking so space. the eligibility area is downtown. If you live at downtown Amherst, you can get a parking permit. So I mean, Dorothy, there's there's three zones when it, so the residential parking structure that we have, the fees that you've looked at. There's three zones. There's resident area one, resident area two, and then all other, essentially, sort of everything else. Um, in resident area one and two, you have to live in a, on specific streets in order to have access to those permits. And what this is proposing is to increase the, um, the eligible streets to have access to those resident area permits or resident only area permits. And so basically it gives you sort of like a, a dedicated area where only re those residents can park and they don't have to worry about competing for spots with the rest of mm -hmm. downtown. Okay. And there are no private parking permits on those streets already. As indicated by section, oh, this is according to Tracy, um, which is, this is very thorough. As indicated in section three of the permit parking reg regulations, um, only McClellan and uh, oh my gosh, Cosby are eligible for area two and on-street parking is prohibited entirely on both Page and Beston and during certain hours on Cosby. Right, so I, I know that, okay, so now I've, I've, cause I, I did not catch this before. Um, Tracy is now in the audience oh, and great. has her hand up. Okay, great, okay. Thanks, Andy. So I don't have, that would be very nice to bring Tracy into the meeting. I'm bringing her in. Great. Okay. Stacey, so. I was doing my best. I'm so glad you're here. Yes. So by the time I was going to admit you, you had disappeared. So Anna was. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, my family wanted dinner and stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the the thing that the thing that we had done here is the TAC. I mean, I had looked at this area one. I mean, Sean had brought it up at one of the meetings. Right, and he said that when they were considering the changes to 
the permit parking regulations, they didn't look specifically at area one or area two, but that was something that could be looked at. And I was pretty intrigued about why these streets were treated differently and you know why they have these special rules. So, I mean, I did spend time um, on these streets, like looking at them. Um, so the one area, the area one, I'll just tell, tell you is that basically they include like frats and they're right next to frats. They're like right back up against UMass. Um, and so, and that's why those permits are there. And a number of those streets around there, like Phillips, which is the one at the, well, I, I don't know if you guys have, maybe if Sean, if you have a map, like the town center permit parking map, you could, people could see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll try to find that. I mean, I have a copy if I'm allowed to share my screen. If that's oh, okay with people. That's, that would be fine with me, but I'm not the technical master. Here. I, I have this. Do you want me to share it, Tracy, and tell me if this is the right one? Yeah, that's fine. It's just the one on the from the town website. Is this the one you're talking about? Um, sort of blurry. I'm not sure if it's helpful. Yeah, but... sort of. I mean, I was looking at the PDF version. Because mm -hmm. so, the PDF version. This is, is actually interesting because I've I've always looked at the <laughs> I've always looked at the PDF so much because I printed it out. So so this green area is just you know these are the streets where you're allowed to have these special residential only passes. And the idea right was to make sure that UMass students who didn't live on those streets were not parking on them. And then what's interesting about this orange area is that so if you look so there's a section of McClellan which is residential only only area two mm -hmm. and so people are allowed to use that park in those spaces and the day i was there there were no people parked there but people are allowed to park there if they live along that section of mcclellan and then also if they live along that section the along cosby so it's a little strange to me you know that basically so cosby doesn't even touch mcclellan but they're saying, well, if Cosby people need overflow parking, that they can come down to McClellan and park there. And the issue of this was brought to us by somebody who lives on Page and who has a small driveway. When, when they had visitors, they were told there was no place that their visitors could legally park because they aren't, you know, as um, yeah. they aren't in the parking on the allowed streets for parking and that they are, mm -hmm. their guests would have to park over near Kendrick Park. And that was the only option available to them. And so this was just to, I mean, I think that somebody mm -hmm. on Cosby had specifically asked for it. I don't know the history of it. And also on that section of Cosby, there's a special, the one side of the street, the um, north side of the street allows parking um, from 3 p.m. on, which is not something that's anywhere else in the system. I, I think that, you know, in some cases, the town has been responsive to concerns raised by residents, but this was a concern raised by a Page Street resident okay. and just said, what are my visitors supposed to do? And so um, we just asked that it be, ex that the mm -hmm. Page residents and the Best in residents have that privilege, just like the Cosby residents do. I don't really see that there will be a lot of demand for it. I, I per, I'd be interested in how many people actually take out these residential area two permits. Um, but, you know, Page, all the residential properties along Page have driveways. All the residential properties on Cosby have driveways. All the residential properties on Beston have driveways. And most of the ones on McClellan do as well. I mean, so it's really just an issue of when you have visitors and your visitors are saying, I need somewhere to park. Is this as a courtesy to those people? And I mean, this issue comes up a little bit too. If you look, think about some of the sections of Lincoln where people aren't allowed to park. So if those people, if those residents have guests, where did those, you know, where do they park? So it's just an issue because it's sort of on the fringe of what's okay. where so parking's I, allowed and not. Tracy, I have a question. I have driven on those streets and I see permit parking signs. I had taken that to mean people who did not live on those streets, but who lived downtown had bought permits from the town to park there. So those permit signs, how would somebody know? If somebody has a parking permit and they see that there's a parking permit sign on the, those streets, wouldn't they think that that's where they're allowed to park? You're saying that the, those spots are- I don't are know why you, 
Yeah, Dorothy, I'm not sure what you've seen. I know when I looked at those streets closely, I spent time walking around them. Page mm -hmm. is marked where it says no parking. Oh, I don't mean page. And I'm Beston talking is about marks, And Beston is marked where it says no parking. I mean Cosby and Cosby and allows McClellan. parking at certain times of day. Yeah, but I thought um, Cosby and, and McClellan And then along McClellan, the along McClellan, I think it's the south side of McClellan. You know, there's the orange zone for the permit, and then there's the yellow zone, which is the main downtown zone. Yeah. So, um, Jen? and the other, the other main question, I mean, the other main comment that the TAC had was just about North Pleasant Street near Kendrick Park. And we just wanted to bring that to the council's attention because um, as I wrote up in the memo, you know, in December, when the council was evaluating the, was, was considering what they wanted to do with North Pleasant Street, west of Kendrick Park in terms of providing additional parking for park visitors, in terms of calming traffic and everything. Um, the TAC had recommended that you don't allow parking on the west side of North Pleasant Street, west of Kendrick Park, um, because we are concerned about the safety with the number of the driveways there and the sight lines and so on. And it was agreed that with the park, it would be safer to have the parking on the east side of the street, right next to the park. And so it just seemed that in the write-up on the parking permit regs, that that change wasn't reflected. And so that was our comment there because the current list keeps the old list that says permit parking is allowed on the west side of the street. And the council in December said, parking is prohibited on the west side of the street. So mm -hmm. we were just pointing okay. out that inconsistency. Okay, um, uh, Anna. Uh, so I think, uh, and I'm, I wanna be mindful of time because I know this is just the first thing on our agenda today. So uh, Dorothy, is what you're asking do, is, do the different areas have different permits? Like, are they a different color or a different shape or something? That's, I think that's what you're asking, Dorothy, mm -hmm. which would allow then people to know if area two people within that radius were parking in that designated spot. So mm -hmm. I think that's a Jennifer question. Yeah. Um, yes, there's different color signs for the different types of places like the town center parking permit signs are blue. And I believe the residential ones are labeled area one, area two, and they're green. And um, each of the three different parking permits are a different color. And Sometimes we try to make them a different shape as well. So they really stick out. Okay. Right. So to answer Dorothy's question, people from downtown are not parking in area two because their permit would look different. Right. right. Okay. Yes. So now that that is clarified, I would um, say that I um, agree with Tracy that the little cutout for Page and Beston doesn't really make sense and that they sh that should just be one area there. That is um, an opinion that I have. And if anyone has a counter opinion, uh, please do it. I, so, uh, it, so that it's, I understand the system better. I, Cause when I had seen it, I hadn't noticed those little differences, um, but it doesn't seem make sense on that. Um, the other question Tracy brought up, I've had several calls recently about the West side of Kendrick park. And I think that, that if Tracy is correct that the town council made a decision and somehow it didn't get reflected that that should be tracked down and clarified. Um, but there's um, one piece that was left hanging, which was the south coming bike path. If the traffic is going north on the west side of Kendrick Park, there had been talk and it was kind of like we finished this, but we hadn't quite dealt with the south coming bike trail. So I'm just bringing that up as I had some calls on that. Um, so let me just take other people, take my hand down. Um, Anika. Yes, do we know why uh, that section of Page and Beston was cut off? Good question. Do we um, have any, did, Jennifer, do you know? I really don't know what the thought process was when those areas were created. It's a very small amount of streets to be added. It, I think it's harder to exclude them than to it would be easier to include them um, in terms Dorothy, of- and we, and we will reach out, um, as Paul said, we'll reach out to um, Public Works and, and have them, they can let us know if there's any public safety reason why um, you wouldn't want to expand. Okay, thank you. 
So I've got that scribbled down. Um, okay, I'm going to remove my, lower my hand, which I can't see up there anyway. I'm looking for hands. Um, I don't see any. Okay, so um, that was the suggestion from TAC. Um, and Jennifer has said that it's the signs are clear and people do know where they're supposed to park and they can follow that. Um, I raised the question that has been brought to me by a number of people about finishing up. Well, okay. So tra first we have to decide, is Tracy correct that the town council said the parking would be on the east side of North Pleasant Street on the park side? And did that get changed in the record. Um, once that is decided, then the question of the bicycle path would be then discussed. We, I don't think you can discuss the bicycle path until we figure out what the parking is doing. Um, any comments on this? I, I'd suggest we can look at what the council voted. If, if there needs to be a technical correction to the regs, we can include that. Uh, I don't think part where the bicycle path is a topic that was advertised for your meeting tonight. You're just talking about parking. Um, so right. you know it's, it's on that. the carryover um, document. So we, okay. so we make sure that we have there. You can talk that. about it. Then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. And Tracy is still here. Uh, I don't know if this is the right place, but I, I know that there's been some correspondence about the um, back end parking. And I will admit, I watched a video and it kind of had an effect of making me change my mind about the safety of back end parking. But uh, Tracy has brought up the issue of, at the moment, some are going backing in, some are going in front end, and is the town enforcing no that? Yes. Sorry, Dorothy, I th uh, we're still on the parking permit fees and I, and I, yeah, I thank you. Thank right. You. She did okay. talk about the back and parking, but it was just to strike the word parallel from the. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, what is our next step at this moment? We have discussed this sufficiently or not? We're not making any votes or anything um, because we're not doing that. Well, we're supposed to make a decision. I don't see, I don't catch this. I think we say a big. We don't thing. vote until after the hearing. But on the other hand, we make a decision as to what is in the document that is presented in the link to people who come to the hearing. So um, Shalini. Yeah, I think at this point, uh, firstly, I just want to thank Tracy again and uh, TAC for uh, you know, thanking our uh, committee of experts to look at those things that we, are not, we don't have the skills to look at. So thank you for doing that for us. And what I'm hearing is that the staff is going to look at the implications of what was recommended by DAC and, uh, how, and they're going to report back to us at a later point, along with the Kendrick Park parking. Those two things, the staff is going to get back to us. And at this point, I don't think we have to make any other decision. Okay, Paul. No, what's important for the committee to do tonight is to decide what you're putting on the table for consideration. Mm -hmm. So right. I think what I said in terms of Kendrick of uh, North Pleasant Street near Kendrick Park is that if the council had already voted something, we can make a technical correction to the rules and regulations and include that in the advertisement. Um, but you, I, if you if you're okay with all the other changes that Sean had shown, then mm -hmm. that's what we will put on with the change made to the fees. Okay, and I hope that we get a, a copy sent to us so that we will know what we have said. Right, so so in order for us to advertise for a March 10th public hearing, it has mm -hmm. to be posted 14 days in advance. I think that's right, Athena. And so you need to decide tonight what you wanna advertise. Right. And it, it yeah. doesn't mean you're deciding that, you just, we're just saying, what is the what are the parameters okay. here? So, but is that a vote that we do? We say, yes, we're ready to go with whatever it is that we have discussed that Sean has written down and kept track of for our advertisement for our hearing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it, but. Um... Yeah, so far the only changes I've made to the document is the fee increase that we discussed. Um, and then I think to uh, points made by others, we can make those other changes um, after the, the hearing if, um, 
once we hear back from Public Works and the, and we review the recommendations from the TAC more. So, um, Athena, do you know if this has to be a vote or again, can this be a consensus with the document we have currently? I think it can be consensus and I'd just like to um, ask that we work together to make sure that the, the formatting in your newer document is yeah, carried forward. The, so so yeah. I think we can clean things up a little bit and present a, a nicer red line version um, sure. when we go to advertise. If that's all right, it sounds like there aren't any further comments. So I, th I think we're done at this point, Dorothy, unless there are any other comments from the committee, we can move to, to the next thing. If this, does this have to be done tomorrow for the 14 days? I know um, that we were on a time frame here. So it needs to be published in two successive weeks in the newspaper, um, the first at least seven days in advance. So I think we decided that it would be published on March 3rd and February 24th. Um, the Gazette needs a few days lead time. So right. I'm, I'm hoping to wrap things up Great. tomorrow. And it sounds Excellent. like there aren't any further comments about the notices. So those can be posted tomorrow and I'll work with Sean to make sure that um, the, the nicer draft of the regulation changes is linked to the bulletin board notice. And with Paul's permission, I'll ask Brianna to publish it in a news and announcement. Great, great. So that we don't have, nobody has to pull in all nighters while I was trying to check out. Okay, all right. Um, so finding the um, agenda somewhere. Um, so I think we can thank Sean and Jennifer for yes. being here. Yes, thank you, Sean. Oh, I can't see Jennifer anymore, but thank um, you all. Thank, oh, there you are. Thank you, Jennifer. And actually, you really did give some very good information when we needed it. So it, it was very, very helpful. So thank you. Thank you both. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Okay. Um, committee work plan and timeline. Um, I, I guess what I would like to do is to do the um, town manager appointments first because the committee uh, work plan and timeline is a discussion which might not be completed today. Does that make sense to anybody besides me? Okay, so um, let's do these appointments. Um, we all received them. We have six, I believe. Um, and we'll do them in the order that the town manager, well, they're printed here. To, shall I read out the, what's the A is the Conservation Commission. Okay, so there's one appointment to the Conservation Commission, Andre Gadera. Uh, Mr. Gadera is, lives on Bay Road. Uh, he came to, uh, he had to do some work with the Conservation Commission, it had experience working on some work on his house that he was getting a permit for, became interested in their work. He's uh, retired and has extensive experience with US Fish and Wildlife, uh, uh, speaks fluent Spanish and has uh, lived and worked in uh, Latin America, specifically Bolivia, I believe, or Peru, yeah. Um, and has extensive, a uh, lot of experience with uh, animals, which I think is a skill set we do not have on the Conservation Commission, so. Okay. Um. I do not remember the format, which is, I guess I'm supposed to say some, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to say, I'm going to ask somebody to make a motion, but it, I believe it's that TSO is going to recommend to the town council that the town manager's um, appointee be approved. Is that more or less the correct points? Yes. Okay. So um, someone would like to make that motion. I want to do it because they're taking my spot. Uh, is that okay? So, oh, yes, uh, yes. all right, great. Thank you. Beautiful. So I would like, and you just said it and I forgot, hang on. I would like to uh, recommend to move, there we go, move, that TSO uh, recommend the town managers move to the, <laughs> hang on, I'm starting it's over. Hard. It's hard. Sorry. I would like to move that TSO recommend to town council the recommendation of Mr. Paul Bachelman of Andy Guadera, Andrew and Andre Guadera to the Conservation Commission. What I miss. Thanks, Andy. Any second? Andy seconded. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Good. Okay, so the motion has been made and seconded. Therefore, I will call the question. And um, um, Anna Devlin Gautier, uh, Anika Lopes. Aye. Andy Steinberg. Aye. 
Shalini Balmilne. Yes. Dorothy Pam. Yes. Okay, we have five to zero. Very good. Okay, so we now go to the elementary school board committee. And again, James, so we had a vacancy when Dwayne Chamble resigned. Uh, he was a, a resident um, member of the committee. So we had done outreach and uh, Angelica Bernal of uh, Hickory Lane uh, put her name forward. Uh, she has a child in both. She has a child in Fort River. She has a child in Wildwood. Uh, she has a special needs child that, and she's the vice president of the uh, CPAP, the Special Education Parent Advisory Council. Um, she's a professor at the university. Uh, comes from a multiracial, multilingual family, um, and is very interested in this primarily because of her experience in the schools, which she has valued, but also recognizes the. She's very articulate about how the physical structure of the building impacted mm -hmm. her child's education. And that was a perspective we hadn't heard before. So, and it's a good voice that, that we would have on the, on the committee, I think. Okay, very good. Um, and I will now entertain a motion um, from someone else. So I therefore will um, move that the uh, Town Services and Outreach Committee recommend to the council the town manager's um, recommended appointment of Angelica Bernal to the elementary school building committee. That's correct. And do we have a second to that motion? Second. Second. Okay. And let us vote. Um, Shalini Balmilm. Yes. Anika Lopes. Aye. Dorothy Pam, yes. Anna Gautier, Devlin Gautier. Yes. And Andy Steinberg. Yes. Okay, that has passed unanimously. Okay, and we now go to the um, Energy and Climate Action Committee. Okay. Thank you. So just to make a note that all of these committees had a lot of people, really highly qualified people who were interested in serving, which was very exciting. Um, for the committees. And so it was really hard decisions along the way. So, and what we tried to do and to reference, so when we interview, it's usually someone from the residence advisory committee, the town manager, the staff support or the, and or the chair of the committee who are in the interview uh, for all, everybody who puts their name and gets interviewed. Um, and so when we're looking after we interview everyone, we sit down, we talk about the needs of the committee based on the staff and the chair of the committee's point of view and what, uh, what, what can bolster the committee and where everything bolster up uh, weak spots. So for the, the Energy and Climate Action Committee, there are two women that we are putting forward, which is actually something that was requested to add women to, to the um, committee. Um, uh, Lori Goldner of Avonwood Road is a physics professor at the university and has been very worked extensively um, on national at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and one of the things that she she has a vested interest is does her daughter in uh, climate action and making and having feeling really strongly about that. But what was uh, impressive to me was her. We are going to be measuring our um, progress, and we want. We needed someone who had a technical background and could think through some of the ways that we were going to be measuring our carbon uh, footprint and how we're making progress on that. So that was the sort of advantage that she um, had on it. Um, and also she had experience with in a different arena with how to affect social change, not from the top down, but from the ground up. And that was a key interest of hers as well. Uh, Stella D is... Um, uh, has a, a child at Wildwood, um, brings a uniquely different perspective um, as um, as a um, arboriculture. She's getting her PhD, but she's also been climbing trees. If you go to her website, it's kind of wacky, but she's climbing trees, you know, pruning, and cares a lot about the the um, the uh, environment based on. Uh, the the not the built environment, but the the vegetation mm -hmm. and had was very articulate, much more, more articulate than me about how vegetation impacts climate change as well. So, um, and so it was like, it was a, vi a vision that we did not have duplicated on the committee at all. And so mm -hmm. uh, again, a, a passion for climate change lives her life um, as um, in, along these, these times. And so it, that's why we chose these two people. Okay. 
And do we have a motion? Uh, Shalini. So I just had a question about the mm -hmm. ECAC. Do we have any people of color or, um, or my, we, uh, we yeah. had one, but I think he resigned. So I don't think we do. Okay. I mean, given the huge implications we are learning now about how it impacts certain communities, mm -hmm. I think making an extra effort to, it's, I know it's really hard. Mm -hmm. No, it's good. It's a good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Andy. Yeah, I just questioned uh, during the uh, interviews, uh, were you satisfied that uh, the two candidates you're recommending are committed to uh, working towards the implementation of the goals that were previously adopted by the council on the recommendation of ECAC for uh, the climate action plan. Yeah, they were both familiar with the work of the ECAC. Um, and yes, I'm, you know, we didn't ask that specific question. We mostly focus on whether they're able to make the time commitment that ECAC requires. It's a pretty heavy time commitment that's required for ECAC. Um, but they didn't seem to be express any concerns about what the recommendations were from ECAC. And so part of those conversations were Stephanie, in part of our interviews were Stephanie Ciccarello and Laura Drucker as well. Hey, Anna. I wanted to answer Shalini's question. I believe there is at least one person who self-identifies as a person of color on ECAC right now, based on the last meeting I was at, I think, well, maybe if they've left in the meantime, but it's possible. Um, but I agree that it'd be great to do more outreach to those communities. Okay. Um, so are we ready to have a motion on this? Yes, Shalini. I can go. Um, I move that uh, the yeah. Town Services and Outreach Committee recommend to the Town Council to accept the appointments made by the Town Manager to appoint Lori Gold Goldner and Stella D in the ECAC Committee. Second. Okay. Call the question. Um, all right. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Uh, Anika Lopes. Aye. Shalini Balmilne. Yes. Anna Devlin Gautier. Yes. And Dorothy Pam. Yes. Okay. Um, five to zero. Okay. And our next person is, um, let's see. Jones Library. Why don't you take it? Take it down. Yeah. So, and Anna, you're right. There is a person who self identifies, as you noted. Uh, for the ECAC. Uh, so this is an, another highly competitive, we had a lot of people interested in serving on the Jones Library Building Committee. Um, we settled on Alex Lopez. Um, he uh, has two children at Crocker Farm um, and uh, very um, uh, plugged into communities and very interested in organizing communities um, who aren't typically represented and participating. Uh, has a union organizing background um, and uh, has, brings a critical eye to all, I think will bring a critical eye to all the work um, that we're doing. Um, and, he, you know, he had very creative ideas about how to reach out to folks as well. So I think he will be a mm -hmm. really strong in and, and this lot that we have is for, for someone who can be a, a good, a good outreach to the community. So we're mm -hmm. pleased that he offered his services. Sounds good. Okay. Um, and we have a motion. Or any discussion or questions? Okay. Anika? Okay, so I move to, uh, I move that the uh, Town Services and Outreach Committee uh, recommend to the Town Council to accept the appointee made by Paul Bachman to the Jones Library Building Committee. Okay, and do I have a second to that? Second. second. Oh, okay. Andy, that's okay. Andy can have it. Uh, yeah. Great, and I, I will. I must say, uh, whoever is keeping minutes, which I suspect may be Athena, I haven't written down. I can't think and write and see hands. The motion makers and the motion seconders, but I, I realize I am, they're all going to be in the minutes. Uh, I'm capturing those, and I'm I'm 
tweaking the motion language to be in the format well, that we usually use, even though those are not the words that we're on. You know? But I think I think people are doing a great job, great <laughs> job of these motions. And um, you know, all will be experts soon because this is a bunch of motions. Um, did I do the vote on that one just then? Not yet, but Anna has not yet. Okay. I have a question. Athena, yes. would it be possible for you to write a sort of a motion sheet, not like an official motion sheet, but because we're going to be doing appointments again and again, and because for whatever reason, this does not stick in my brain, could you write just the sample language one time? And they stick are in the previous TSO report, and they are in the previous minutes that you have in your packet. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Because my granddaughter would say, how does she do? She just thumbs up. Okay. All right. Good. So I will um, call the question. It was made. It was seconded. Okay. I believe. Yes. Okay. Anna, how vote you? I vote yes. And Andy? Yes. And Anika? Aye. And Shalini? Yes. And Dorothy? Yes. Okay. Great. Doing great. Okay. We now have a public shade tree. So, um, these are two candidates for reappointment. Um, this is a committee that has not had a lot of interest. And so, you know, we, we held off on Henry Lappin, who's been on for a very long time. He's, he's going to stay involved no matter what. But given that they're the mm -hmm. uh, dearth of candidates for the Shade Tree Committee, I'm going to reappoint, ask you to reappoint uh, Shoshana King um, and Henry Lapham to the Public Shade Tree Committee. Very good. Uh, it's a great committee if you've ever joined a tree planting, um, which I did in front of my house in the pouring rain once, uh, but it was great. And I thank the town for having planted about six or eight trees up and down Amity in my area. Uh, Anna, your hand is up. Okay, I'm ready now. So yes. uh, I move to recommend that the town council approve the town manager reappointment of Shoshana King and Henry Lappin to the shade tree uh, committee, effective immediately for a term to expire at a point that is somewhere in this document. <laughs> Expires June 30th, 2024. <laughs> yes, that is correct. We usually do put the expiration date in the motion, which I had forgotten. So thank you so much for that beautifully worded motion. Do we have a second? Minutes. Second. Great. Okay, I'll call the question. And Shalini. Okay. Yes. And Anika. What? Uh, do you vote yes or no? Or did you say my name? I'm sorry. No, I said Anika. Anika. Oh. Oh, oh, aye. Aye. Okay, and Andy? Yes, aye. And Anna? Yes. And Dorothy? Yes. Okay. We have done that. Okay. And the last one is Transportation Advisory Committee. Okay. So this is, we have two appointments to the Transportation Advisory Committee and Tracy's still in the audience. I wanna thank her for participating in these interviews. Uh, Stefan Sejek and Christine Lindstrom. Um, Mr. Sejek is, a, grew up in Amherst, um, has gone to UMass, worked for the MBTA for a number of years, um, has returned, has a, driven a bus and been a supervisor for the PVTA. Um, so he knows a lot of the ins and outs is really interesting about the PVTA system. So he is one candidate. The other one is Christine Lindstrom who um, is very st strong about alternative means of transportation and caring about bike lanes and walking in sidewalks and things like that because the way she lead leads her life with she and her family try to live as best they can without a vehicle. Okay, um, any questions or comments? Okay, all right, um, let's have a motion. Okay. okay, all right. I, I put my minutes away, so I'm gonna screw this one up now. Um, no one else wants to, okay. I can, I can help if you want I moved, I, um, I moved to recommend to the town council the appointment of, can you say the names, Athena? And the name. Stefan Sijek and Christine Lindstrom. Thank you. Of Stefan Sijek and Christine Lindstrom to the Tra Transportation Advisory Committee effective immediately 
with a for a two-year term which expires June 30th, 2023. Okay, and do we have a second? Second. Okay. Um, all right, I call the question. Um, Andy Stein, Steinberg. Yes. Anika Lopes. Aye. Shalini Balmilne. Yes. Anna Devlin Gautier. Yes. And Dorothy Pam. Yes. Okay. So um, on TAC, um, you have all the members now for on TAC? No, we'll, we'll be doing reappointments. Pretty soon you'll be getting a slew of reappointments and that's when you'll see a few, there's a few more that need to be done for reappointments on that one. Okay. All right. Good. I, and I know and that other you, committees as well. Yep. Yeah, good. So how, how many, how many appointments do you have lined up to make yet? Oh, well, every, we haven't even started. This is, these are just filling holes in the past. We haven't really started the big reappointment process where you'll get a, a sheet of um, 20 at a time, probably. Oh, great. Okay, so uh, everybody go study those minutes and practice your motion language. Well, the, the reappointments are pretty easy because we do that all in one fell swoop. Um, and so, because oh, we're not interviewing, if, if it's someone's eligible for a reappointment, but it gives you the opportunity to say, what is this person's attendance record? What do you want to ask if you want? So we can ask a few questions, but then we can move the whole group of 20 in one motion. Yes. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, so looking at the um, agenda, if I can find it again. Okay, now we get to the work plan. Um, okay, there's, I, I took what you sent in and did something with it, um, which I can find somewhere. Um, but there have been other things that have been coming up and, and that we may have brought, put on our plate, whether we ask for them or not. Um, so I guess the thing to do is to try to find, okay, what I sent out. Oh. Ah, there's something else before I do that. Um, um, this was not advertised, but I don't know whether it needs to be advertised. We got a memo today from um, Lynn Griesmer um, where we have to, the TSO committee um, is supposed to, one of the members would be a liaison perhaps to the Disability Access Advisory Committee and the other one would be to the Transportation Advisory Committee. So, and then all counselors are asked for other, other committees. So I don't suppose that we take any action now. So I guess I'm just drawing it to your attention. Um, not on the agenda for tonight. Excuse me? It's not on the agenda for tonight. Right. So I just brought to your attention to that that memo came out and people are to think about it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Shalini. Oh, yeah, but I was wondering if we need to discuss as a committee especially having had the retreat about the process, how we're going to prioritize our priorities. And that is why like I had sent to Dorothy, are we on that topic yet? Of You're talking priorities? about the priorities. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. Um, yes. So, so there's two things. Shalini sent um, a, a way of, of looking at how we're going to talk about things, which I think that we need to talk about before we talk about a specific thing. Okay, mm -hmm. but um, this was kind of to see what people, what their priorities were. There are other things besides what our priorities are though that will determine our agendas. And that is when the town needs something or when the town is ready for something. Um, so some of the things that are not on here, um, we've, well, we, we, we've actually, we've told we're gonna get a presentation on potholes and maybe on sidewalks. Will sidewalks be part of it? Okay. And the timing of some of these things is not necessarily up to us. Okay, potholes and sidewalks. Uh, mm -hmm. That we're gonna get something on um, water system and sewer system at some point, but I'm not sure when. Can I answer those questions? Oh Are yes, there? please do. So so reg water regulations will be given to the council on the February 28th and likely referral to the TSO, depending on what the council does, but that's likely. So you'll have water regulations coming up in, during March. Um, in March, we're prepared to make a presentation on 
paving, roads paving, and prioritization of road paving. It, it's, a, it's a really interesting uh, presentation, actually. I think you'll enjoy it, um, and sidewalks as well. And then uh, down the road at the end of March, we'll be presenting sewer regulations. Um, and then you'll have to entertain those, uh, review those during April, probably. Mm -hmm. So those are those. The, the, the regulations are going to be referrals. The road paving thing is something that was expressed as an interest by mm -hmm. uh, members of the TSO committee. OK, if I can please request. Right, we did. Um, then last night at the planning board, um, the planning department gave a whole list of priorities and interests. And there was one that was related to um, some of the things we've been talking about that they might get to in the fall, which was to do looking at the, which had been on our list here, the municipal parking district that the, the um, planning department will be looking at that. Um, so are there other things of that sort that it with a, it, within a kind of town time frame that we're gonna be having that you know of, Paul? Uh, not off the top of my head, I don't have. Um, okay, so I see. Out. Okay, Andy, your hand is up. So uh, I guess uh, one thing on the municipal parking district is that's really um, within the CRC. I'm, I'm not sure that it belongs within our committee at all because um, it is a zoning overlay district question. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that at a minimum that the chair needs to talk to the chair of CRC, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that it is uh, assigned to us. There are a number of things, and this was of course what my point was, why it was listed. I was sort of protecting the process as opposed to stating my personal preferences. And that is that um, things that have either been assigned to us or that had been worked on by the prior um, TSO and were carryover items um, uh, need to um, sort of have a, have a specialized mm -hmm. slot and right. that we need to go forward. Um, and um, I'm not sure, and I think that Paul can answer this question as to where the uh, uh, North Amherst traffic changes fit into that description, whether that's been a prior um, expectation that this committee would take that up at an, at an appropriate time. So need feedback um, on, on that one. Um, so I can I answer that. Yeah, so, so the North Pleasant Street sidewalk and, and improvements are there's no funding source for them at this point in time. So that's not a high priority. It's a, it's, we've made an initial presentation, but it's going to be an extensive mm -hmm. involvement process. So at the earliest, the second half of the calendar year. Okay. In the North Hammers traffic changes. Yeah, we don't have funding. That's yeah. no, because that was one that we were looking for a grant for the number yeah. yeah, we have no money for that. Okay, Shalini. Yeah, I was uh, suggesting that we as a committee come up with a process for prioritizing and decision making. So for example, you know, we got these different items and I created a matrix which looked at the impact of these on our goals, like climate action goals, social justice and equity goals, economic goals, and then the community at large. And then mm -hmm. what is a staff priority? Like it's coming from the staff, like of something, I don't know. And then um, uh, the st and then the on the other side, you have to look at the staff time and, co and the costs involved, like does it involve an external consultant and whatnot? So it may be important, but it's, we don't have the money for it as Paul just said. So when you start putting all of these things into a matrix, then we can see which priorities are tackling solving multiple problems in our addressing multiple goals in our town and it kind of gives us something to talk about rather than 
uh, randomly choosing or having our own pet projects, for example, and which is fine to have pet projects also, mm -hmm. like we're passionate about that. Um, but at the same time, as a group to decide how are we going to make these decisions? Um, I do understand what you're saying. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I I could see I could see that working as a theoretical thing and then not actually mesh, meshing up with what we have to do. So, um, but I think that we certainly should do that. I think that, but at the first moment or two, I thought it would be interesting to really good to find out, which is related to your matrix. What's ready to go? What is is for example, if we did your matrix, the North Pleasant Street traffic and sidewalk would be, you know, not on our plate right away. But um, and I think I think that the question of the carryover items, that was people said, okay, I'm not going to really rank too many of those because we have to do them. So the order of the carryover items and what they are. Um, we need to kind of get more guidance on that. Um, however, there's some things that a number of people put in here that don't link up to any of the things that the staff has brought to us or that has been referred to us at this time. And maybe we in fact won't do anything about them. But I think that some people wanted to at least discuss um, and that the two areas are where I don't think, I don't see anything that's, that's been brought to us services to the vulnerable and the underserved and services to senior citizens. And it may be that we won't do anything about that, but yet I think some people wanted to say something about that and to get some kind of feedback from um, the town manager to see whether in fact that's something that we would be doing. Um, I mean, in other words, sometimes people want to do something a little proactive and not just reactive. And it may be that we can't, that we can only be a reactive committee. So. Um, Paul, I want to know what your response to that is. Yeah, so I mean, if you have a topic that the members of the council, members of the committee want to address, well, we can come to you, we can have that discussion, we can have the appropriate people here to talk about it. Um, I think you are going to need to manage your time um, in terms of how much you want to allocate per agenda and mm -hmm. starting to chart these out over the next three to six months will probably and I think that's one of the things we're looking at in terms of what's what are you going to get referred? What's going to, what's the council going to refer to you? Right. So that's right. that's got to be a higher priority than mm -hmm. other things. Right. Um, there will be some time sensitive, some timely things like the the road paving that will be timely. I think you you're getting a lot of questions about potholes and things, so um, mm -hmm. bringing that up is good. And then in terms of um, projects that we're getting ready to move forward, you know, a paving project or, you know, like this, the parking regulation, something that staff have been working on for quite some time. Uh, we'll present it to you and you can manage it whenever you think you can get to it. Okay. Um, Anna, I see your hand up there. Yeah. So, I mean, some of the things, and I think I wrote this in my email back to you, Dorothy, was, you know, my list of priorities, I looked at them as the first two are, are areas I want to focus on. Then the last two for me were like, these are initiatives that have been started. And I'd like to, like Andy was saying, right? Like continue to, they're on our plate. We can't just ignore them. And so things mm -hmm. like, um, I think lunch cart, lunch cart policies was on mine. Like, look, I, I love a lunch cart, but it's not like a passion project for me. It's that it's in our lab mm -hmm. and we got to deal with it. Right. So I think right. that that's, I'd like to see those moved forward. Um, but when mm -hmm. I think about, you know, I also think it's really important to consider our scope when we look at these. So I set climate action and then uh, service to the vulnerable and underserved, like thinking about that second one, when we think about town services that are in partnership with community services, like something like Craig's doors, right? There, there are some areas that I think as we get into this, there may be some things that like, oh, that's actually a CRC thing, not a TSO, right? Like, I think that as we dig into this, mm -hmm. um, it might be more apparent. For me, the climate action one um, is something that there are, there are, um, components of the legislation proposed in CARP that are directly impactful to TSO and would be under our net. So I just, to be to be clear, like that, these weren't very just tossed out there. There, there mm -hmm. are specific measures within each of them right. that I'd like to move forward. Right. And for example, climate action could go with the um, composting um, thing, which I, I guess is, I don't, 
it's it's being worked on or somehow it has come to us or it got it's started. Perfect. I'm not sure. I think it's on a carryover. Um, but it's a little um, bit of both, but I know we can't really talk about it because it wasn't on the agenda. Well, priorities is on the agenda. So um, I meant, sorry, I was going to go into the, I, that was more a note to me, Dorothy, not to you okay. of like, don't, don't start reading off all the things I know about composting now. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Um, so I did tune into something of, of an MMA thing yesterday for part of it. And it is fascinating. It's fascinating what other people are doing, but I believe that the, the example they gave was a town that did its own collection, did not have people. And then it's a, you know, not having our own collect town collection. We, there's a lot of things we can't do. Okay, Shalini, do you have your hand up? You had a question about the outreach plan, which is also part of our um, responsibility to create one. And uh, related to that, I've been meeting with the group from UMass, and I was wondering if anyone else from the this committee wants to join me, or should we create like a subcommittee that's working on the outreach? Because otherwise, it's going to be left out again. Um, so, how do we go about that? I mean, since that's on the priority list, so it's not a new topic. I'm imagining. Right. So, but... so Chalini, first, could you tell me what UMass group are you talking about? Oh yeah, I forget that nobody, not everyone, knows about it. So, this was an initiative that. Um, started with the CRC because we needed outreach for the housing policy and I was spearheading that and reached out to UMass computer science department who received a grant to improve the outreach, especially of uh, in the minority communities and that was a grant for that and so uh, they're creating technologies as well as processes for better community engagement, which we sort of used in one of the last TAC, no, TSO committees. Anyway, so moving forward, they want to continue you, uh, integrating and offering their technologies for our community engagement projects, like it could be Jones Library or whatever. So I've been meeting with them with Mandy Jo and now that she she's not really interested in doing that and she feels like the TSO should be really taking that on. So basically the idea would be to interface with them and then work with them and our own to come up with a process for community outreach that we create in TSO, but then we share it with the rest of the council and each committee can then adapt that outreach process in whatever way they Right. So, so this is where I ask a question of Paul, because I have, I was talking about outreach and um, I believe you'll have to do it again, Paul, because you corrected me mm. and said, it's not our job to do outreach. Mm -hmm. It's our job to do something else. So exactly what our <laughs> path is, is what I need to know. What are we to do? And it's what Shalini talking about in our committee design. So outreach is in your name. So it's town services and outreach. So um, it's it's not your middle name, but it's in there. Um, so in terms of what you what we you your purview from the charge from the town council is to look at how the town is doing outreach, and we're happy to report to you how we're doing things. You can feedback us how we how we should be doing things, um, and we just need to know sort of like the parameters that you want to talk about because outreach takes a lot of different forms, and we talked a whole lot just about a, a legal ad today. Um, you can spend a whole day, you know, mm -hmm. talking about outreach. So if you can define what it is you want to know, if you would like our CPOs to come to one of your meetings to talk about the, their outreach efforts. One of our staff, Brianna, has been going to the UMass groups that Shalini has gone to. Uh, we had a lot of other people going, but it's just a huge time commitment. And so, but Brianna is the one that's most adept at working with that group. Um, and so, um, you know, in terms of, you know, I, I it's how you want to frame the issue really is how you mm -hmm. should, what you want to accomplish. I think you don't want to just open it up and say, let's have a general conversation. That's not very productive of everyone's time. So if you have an out, outcome that you'd like or a report from the CPOs, which is they are supposed to do according to the town charter, 
um, you could ask for that. But I, you, you said that we were not to do particular outreach actions, but we could talk about or define outreach. So Shalini working with UMass to on their computer assisted and, and Brianna's going to, um, our role would be to say, that sounds like a good system. It does not, or we recommend the town use it or we do not, it, but it's not that we use it. Is that correct? Right. So, so every counselor does outreach on your own. You're talking to more right. people than anybody. People are contacting you. So right. what I'm talking about, what is the TSO committee's mm -hmm. role? That's what we want to right. focus on. Right. So, Shalini, yes. What I had in mind was that, uh, you know, when we're creating a new bylaw or a zoning change, or we're discussing housing policy, that as having a process where, and Paul, you can tell me like which part is our role and which part. So I don't imagine us doing what Birana is doing, for instance, but I do imagine us having a process where there is an, in, you know, like we did in our retreat almost, where there's a problem statement that's created, then the town has to know the, the different members of our communities need to know that the council is working on this issue. And then who do we need to reach out to for that? Who is it impacting? Who do we have to reach out to in just the, that's phase one of informing people that we're talking about that. And then comes the part about community engagement or collection of data. And, uh, you know, like we, I created a survey for the housing policy and talking to renters, talking to students, talking to homeowners, having different surveys. And so what sort of data do we need to collect? And so there's a data collection phase. And then there is a phase of sharing that, um, sharing that data collected with the community and this is what we're going to do with it and then coming up so kind of having like a process and actually at different times different people are are coming into it because even the counselors play a role in that like having the same questions across all district meetings for example i think we did that la decided that last time for something some issue or maybe that was in crc where we said that hey can we we're working on this issue and we and the CRC wants feedback from residents. Could we pass on the same set of questions to all the district counselors so that in their district meetings they are able to get that feedback, right? So kind of, uh, and then there is a commit town committees as well. It feels like everyone is doing their own outreach, and it's like not really synthesized. So what I was envisioning for this committee is to create some sort of a process and then every committee can obviously tweak it in how they want to use it, but have the same systematic sort of approach um, for doing that. I'm, I'm gonna ask that we pump the brakes on this conversation because it's getting a little bit into solving a problem and rather than planning okay. the work of the TSO committee. It sounds like right. Shalini has some really clear like a clear vision of where she, some ideas that she'd like to maybe present at the next meeting and have okay. an agenda item about outreach at the next meeting okay i think that sounds like a a, a good suggestion and and i will be very interested in um how that fits in with the town's idea of how committees work um because i i am reading paul's mind which i may be doing wrongly but i think that maybe he doesn't want all the committees to be doing their own research but this is you know we are it outreach is part of the name and it's something that hasn't really been dealt with as to what that means in tso so i think that we're going to have to find out um and you know shalini if you can put some stuff together we would really appreciate it um right and yeah and to be continued i suppose in the next uh but just to clarify, I don't mean that every committee will do its own research. It's just that we create the process and we can discuss more of the process in the next meeting when it's on the agenda. But mm -hmm. but it's more identifying who, which party, which stakeholder is gonna do what part of the process. Okay, that's all. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Andy, I see your hand up. Yeah, um, since it's after nine o'clock and we're getting beyond our 
time where we're trying to adjourn. This is my suggestion um, that we take this list that we've now developed and discussed today. Um, I noticed that Lynn is still in the attendee list so that um, Lynn Paul and Dorothy can take that list um, and um, pair it up with the um, priorities of the council as a whole so that we make sure right. that we are attending to what the council needs most, mm -hmm. which is um, really what some of that carryover stuff is, mm -hmm. what the council needs. Paul will be telling what the uh, uh, executive branch needs and um, to come back at our next meeting with a list um, that gives the priorities, uh, maybe even with some tentative dates um, suggested for them so that we have a document that then we can um, react to at that point, mm -hmm. but allow some work to be done outside of the committee. Um, it's similar to what um, we did in the finance committee this year, and it has mm -hmm. turned out to be very effective. Uh, Sean Mangano, uh, who is a key player in um, making that happen, is the staff person of that committee. So um, I would make that recommendation to, to, to our committee here. I, I think that's an excellent recommendation. And Shalini, I will be uh, mindful of your um, matrix and seeing how that fits in with um, dealing with some of these because it's, we're really talking about um, timing, importance, staff. I mean, some of the things that you mentioned, those will be some of the determinants in deciding the order of, of how they get done. Um, so- uh, Anika has her hand up. Oh, yes, Anika. Uh, well, I um, I agree with Andy, and also, you know, thank you, Sean. I think it's great to, you know, incorporate, especially that grid that um, we had during the retreat. And I know also it's been clear, it's uh, cleared for me just really hearing our role in terms of outreach, because coming in new, you hear so much about outreach, 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 and TSO needs to do outreach. So knowing this now, um, I appreciate the pause because I had, um, that was one of my points of putting outreach towards the top, just from what I'm hearing. And then also the others, you know, I put in, of course, um, my particular concerns and then those coming from District 4 that I'm hearing the most of. So I think that just having some clarity as to what out the, what TSO's role is now regarding outreach, it's, I know, like, I'd appreciate that pause to kind of revisit. Excellent. Um, any other comments or questions? Um, and then it being 920, well, 919, we could consider adjourning. The comment was for on minutes end. to the next meeting or do you want to oh, do this quickly now? Yes. Um, well, I have read the minutes. I found no problem with them. Um, I see that, that Andy has said that we, which uh, it's not as clear in my mind, that we had voted that the chair could finalize the minutes. I also thought that we'd said that the whole group committee would look at the minutes. So I did make a point of reading them and I found that they were fine. Uh, did anyone have a question with the minutes or comment on the minutes? Okay, can I have a motion to accept the minutes? Move we accept the minutes of ooh, February 1st, 2022, regular Good. meeting. Great, and second. do I have a second? Yes, thank you. Okay, um, is this a roll call for minutes? Athena, is yes. this the first of all things? Yes, okay, Anika. Aye. Andy. Yes. Anna. Yes, sorry. Shalini. Yes. And Dorothy, yes. Okay, we have accepted the minutes and thank you for the minutes, Athena. Um, is that what we have done? Have we done what we need to before we adjourn? Public comment? Not that oh, there yes. is much, but there are people. Oh, public comment. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, it is, floor is open for public comment. Um, I probably should have done this earlier. I'm sorry.
I don't see a hand. So I will say that, that at this moment that there is none. Um, okay. Um, I would entertain a motion to um, adjourn. I'm you just declare us adjourned, Dorothy. I can declare you. I can declare us adjourned. <laughs> Taking my motion. All right. All right. Good night, okay. everyone. Thank Bye, you. Bye, Thanks. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.